Welcome to the Judges Training for District 11. Developed and presented by Meg Claxton, DTM PDD, District 11 Chief Judge, LaDonna Hacker, Area 64 Director, and Jamie Wilsey Heckman, LD2 Area 13 Director. Our agenda is divided into five parts with an addendum. The first section will be an overview of what does it take to judge in a speech contest. There's a video given by Distinguished Toastmaster Joseph Phillips, PDD. The second section adds some details from the areas that Joe presented. The third part is the rules concerning the contestants for this year. Fourth is all about the table topics contest. And lastly, the section for those who will be a chief judge at their club area or division levels. What does it take to judge in a speech contest? Watch this video given by Joe. It was given to the region six of which district 11 is a part of. Once you have concluded the video, please come back to this training. Judge, that's what we're going to cover this morning. Next slide. This is a quick overview of our session today. We're going to look at when you are the judge. Why is that important? Judges have a very important role in a speech contest. So we're going to cover when you are the judge. What does it take to be a good judge? We want to look at some of the barriers to objectivity. In every one of our lives, we all have barriers. And those barriers can cause us to not be objective when we are looking at a particular individual, a particular incident. So we're gonna cover what those barriers may be for judges. Common misconceptions, common misconceptions. We have conceptions and some of our conceptions can lead us down the wrong path. So as a judge, we want to make sure that the Con misconceptions that we may have don't impact our ability to judge. We want to talk about disqualifications this morning. Not only disqualifications of a speaker, but of us as judges as well. Eligibility, not only of the speaker, but of judges as well. The requirements for timing and our role as a judge in timing. And then the, lastly, we want to look at originality and the protest when it comes to the originality of a speaker's piece. So these are our overview objectives for today. Next slide. When you are a judge, or when I am a judge. There are four K's that I look at. First of all, as a judge, know your purpose as a judge. Some individuals say, well, I've judged so many contests. That's so well and good. All of us have, if we have been Toastmasters for some time. But know your purpose as a judge. Why are you serving as a judge? what's required of you as a judge. Know what it is. Know the difference between your role as a judge and the role of an evaluator. These two are totally different. When we judge, we are looking to select the individual who presented the best speech on that day at that given time. When you are an evaluator, you are giving feedback to an individual that they may improve their particular presentation. As a judge, we don't do that when we are judging a contest. You can switch hats after. If a contestant asks for feedback, then you give it. But that is not our role as a judge to be an evaluator. Know the traits that make a good judge. And finally, know what gets in the way of you judging a contest well. If you don't know what your biases are, 
I surely don't know. Therefore, those will come into play when you are judging. So all of this we're going to talk about a little bit later as we transition through this presentation. Next slide. The purpose of a judge, I alluded to earlier. As a judge, you're selecting the best speaker on that day. Evaluation is to give feedback. Notice the quote on this particular slide by Bruce Springsteen. All of us that are on this, call, uh, on this Zoom call today, every one of us somewhere in our life have been a judge. We've judged our children, we've judged our spouses, we've judged our relationships with other individuals. We all have been a judge, whether it was good or bad. And that's why it is important that when we are judging, we put the biases aside, our misconcepts aside, and look at the whole picture that's presented before us at that time. All right, next slide. Here are the traits of a good judge for you and I. We must be fair. We must make sure that every contestant that comes before us, we're being fair in the way in which we judge that individual. We must be accurate in the way in which we complete our, eva not evaluation, but our judging form. Be accurate. Know that when we are filling out our forms as a judge, you can't have a tie. You must make sure that there are no ties on your judging form. We are trustworthy. If you say you're going to serve, barring that there are circumstances that come up that prevent you from serving as a judge, make sure your word is your bond because we are looking for you to step in, to conduct yourself in this particular role and help us determine who the best speaker is for that day. We must be knowledgeable, knowledgeable of the rules. This year, make sure as a judge that you go back and you review the rule book which is dated July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. I say that because some individuals who have served as judges in the past relied on an old edition of the rule book. And that caused some problems doing the judging of a contest. So make sure you have the most current copy of the rule book you have become familiar with it and you know what your responsibilities are. Also, we as judges must be good listeners. Now, I have a problem sometimes. I can listen, but then I find myself wandering. We must make sure that we continue to be a good listener listening to make sure that the individual uses the correct English, enunciation, pronunciation, all of that is taken into context when we are judging or serving as a judge for a speech contest. Now, all of us have sense, a sense of humor. If we don't laugh at a joke, you're probably going to laugh at opinions all of us, I found myself doing the very same thing. And I found myself laughing during some of the contests and some of the presentations that some of the contestants have made. So be fair, be accurate, be trustworthy, knowledgeable, and be a good listener. Not just for one contestant, but for all the contestants. Next slide. Now let's talk a little bit about barriers. Some of us as judges, I shouldn't say some of us as judges, but some judges have taken in consideration the speaker's position. Wow, 
number one, had a great speech. So therefore, I'm going to give them a higher score. Then when number five, six, seven, and eight comes along, the scores began to wean. We need to make sure that is not taken in consideration. The speaker's position. That's where fairness come in. So when I listen to speaker one, all the way down to the final speaker, I need to be fair in how I'm going to score those individuals as they present their speeches. Don't be a champion for the underdog. In particular, an individual that has been in a speech contest previously, you may be familiar with a person that has done it. They have been in a speech contest four or five times, and this may be their sixth time as a contestant. Don't get into, well, I want to feel sorry for Joe. Joe has been here six times. No, 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 no. If Joe is not the best speaker, don't fall into the trap just because I'm here number six. Don't make me the underdog and feel sorry for me. That happens because I am familiar with that happening four or five years ago with an individual who consistently con competed in a contest and got to the next level, but never could get past the, the semi-round. But this individual, because they had been there six years in a row, I found myself saying, he's an underdog. I want him to make it to the next level. So let's be fair in how we deal with those individuals. There's a halo effect. I may be one of the smoothest speakers you ever heard, but does that make me the best speaker? Because I can use verbiage. I can use my voice. I may be able to sway you with all of my props that I may have, but that still will not make me the best speaker. Don't get caught into that, the halo effect. And then again, there could be the reverse halo effect. We need to think about that as well as judges. And when we say reverse halo effect, the individual may not be the best speaker. They may struggle with their enunciation and pronunciation of words, but that person can be the, have the best speech, but because of barriers that I have, because I can't quite understand the individual, they did not enunciate the way that I thought they should, I'm using the reverse halo effect. We want to stay away from that. Then of course, the second time around, that goes back again to the champion of the underdog. Person may be, have been uh, in the contest last year, or they may be in the contest two years ago, and now they are back again. Don't look at that and consider it. Just say, this is another speaker. I may have heard them speak two years ago. I may have heard them speak last year. But home in again, is this individual the best speaker for today? Don't fall into the trap of give someone else a chance. Give someone else a chance. I'm going to pick on Rakia. I'm, I, I'm, I should have coordinated this with her. But just because Rakia was a speaker last year in the international contest, and she's back again this year, well, I'm just going to vote for her because she's back this year. Some judges fall into that trap. Remember again, let's be fair and show your trustworthiness when you are judging a speech contest. And don't get caught up on, it's not the norm. Norms have changed since the pandemic. What's normal in your club may not be normal in the next club. 
So a presenter may not come before us with a tie, a suit, or business attire. They may come with jeans, a pullover. Put that aside. As I say, norms have changed. Listen to what the individual is saying and base your scores on what they are presenting to you. Next slide, please. Now, here are some common judging misconceptions. A international speech contest doesn't have to be serious. We always thought, and I did too when I first became a Toastmaster, I have to have a serious speech each time. No, 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 no. It does not have to be a serious speech. It could be a humorous speech. What we want to look at and consider is how the speech is delivered. Taking in consideration the judging form, all of the criteria that's on the judging form, was the speech organized? Did the speaker pronounce the words correctly? Did the speaker use the space allotted to him or her? Did the speech have an opening and a closing? Those are the things we want to look at. So we don't want to take a speaker down on just because it's not a serious speech. I'm glad that Toastmasters International changed that criteria because I have heard some individuals give some great humorous speeches as well as a great tall tales. It's the individual and how they deliver. So let's not get caught up in these misconcepts about a speech. Next slide. Disqualifications. There are always some disqualifications, but here are the things that would disqualify a contestant. The first is eligibility. In order to be a contestant in any speech contest, we always began at the club level. In order for a person to move from the club to the area as a contestant, number one, the club must be eligible. In other words, their dues must have been paid at the time of the contest. The individual must have also been a paid member of the club. Now, if they meet those criteria, club and the individual, and that person wins your club contest, then they move to the area. Whomever wins the area contest at the time of the contest, eligibility requirements are that the area must be eligible and the individual must remain a dues-paying member all the way to the end of our speech contest. That would be all the way up to the district. Timing. Now, I want to hit this. As a judge, it's not our requirement to time a present presentation. There are individuals who will have that responsibility. We have two timers, so don't worry about timing. If a person is disqualified for timing, our timers will relay that information to the contest master. A person can also be disqualified because of originality. In other words, when I hear a presenter, I wanna make sure that I'm listening to their presentation, and it is an original piece. Yes, they can quote, but no more than 25% of that speech can refer to quotes or information from someone else. The rest of that speech, the other 75%, should be 
from the presenter, original information. Now, if that does not happen, if it's not original, and there is someone that says, Chief Judge, Contest Master, we as judges can also call this to the attention of the Chief Judge. We can contest the originality of a presenter's speech, but then that opens up another floodgate where we men have to make sure that that presenter is offered time to defend their presentation. I'll talk about that a little bit later. One other piece that is now in the rule book, that's why I'm calling on you to look at that rule book, is that when a speaker gives their presentation, we used to be able to refer to a previous speaker in our presentations, not any longer. That is a cause for disqualification of a contestant if he or she references or refers to a previous speaker in the contest that he or she is participating in. That's the new addition to the rule book. Next slide. As I said, paid membership, review the most current speaker rule book, and maintain eligibility all the way through to all levels. That's the eligibility piece. And we as judges, we must make sure we've paid our dues and that we meet all the eligibility requirements just as a speaker in a contest. Next slide. I mentioned the timing. Don't worry about timing. The timers will have that responsibility. Next slide. Here's the originality piece, and it talks about no plagiarizing. Make sure if you hear it as a judge, call it to the attention of the contest master, but particularly myself as your chief judge so that we can get on that immediately once the speaker or the contest is over. Now, when I say over, I mean all contestants have spoken. When we get to the deliberation phase, that's when we will call that into question. Next slide. I mentioned the originality protest earlier. Here it is again. Make sure as a judge, if you see or hear anything that falls into the originality protest category, call it to our attention, myself or the contest chair. And then we must give the contestant, as I said, the opportunity to respond to the protest. Once that has happened, then we as judges will vote. Should that individual continue or should that individual be disqualified? That's when it will take place. And then we will proceed with the conclusion of the contest. Next slide. I wanna give you a quick summarization of what we are responsible for as judges. Number one, as a judge, your role and my role is to select the best speaker for that day. That's no our purpose know the traits as a judge. We must be fair, we must be accurate, trustworthy, knowledgeable of the rule book and our responsibility as a judge. And we must be a good listener, a good listener. Don't confuse the judge's role with that of a speech evaluator. Remember, we don't evaluate, we judge. Be mindful of the barriers 
of objectivity, the halo effect, reverse halo effect. Second time around, all of those, beware of them, because we all fall into one of those categories at some time as a judge. But we want to make sure that when you and when I judge a contest, all of that is put aside. And also, know that a speech contestant can give a humorous speech. It does not have to be a serious speech all the time. Next slide. Also, a contestant can be disqualified for one of the three reasons, their eligibility, timing, and the originality piece. Originality also, again, goes back to the, the aspect of I, as a contestant, referring to a previous speaker in the contest that I am a part of. That is a no-no this year. Next slide. Before I give the resources, I would like to open it up now for any questions that anyone. Now, the final slide, these are the resources for what I shared with you today. There are three videos, training videos that are on the Toastmasters International website. And I would call your attention to those if you have not viewed them before the contest and roles when you're the judge and the judge's guide and ballot form. I certainly can. We will get these copied and paste it to you as a matter of I hope you the video answered a lot of questions for you about being a judge. So let's go over a few of the areas. Requirements vary at each level of Toastmaster speech contests. The specific details are stated in the Judge Certification of Eligibility Form 1170 in the 2023-2024 Speech Contest Rulebook. However, all judges must be paid Toastmaster members. For the club contests to participate as a judge for your club, you must simply be a paid member. For area, division, and district contests to judge, you must be a paid member for a minimum of six months. You must also have completed either six speech projects in the competent communications manual, or if you've completed levels one and two of any paths in the Toastmaster pathways. Members are ineligible to judge if they are competing in the same contest type during the same contest cycle nor are they eligible if they are a declared candidate for district elected office. The role of judge is to select the winner of a speech contest using the judge's guide and ballot. Each speech contest has its own judge's guide and ballot, and the speech contests offered by Toastmasters are international, humorous, table topics, tall tales, and the evaluation. To judge and rank appropriately, you must clearly understand that you are judging. It's important to read the judging criteria portion of judges' guides and ballots. These documents explain the requirements for judging the elements of content, delivery, and language. Do not base points according to your personal beliefs, interests, political affiliation, or nationality. Focus on the speech. You must be impartial. You must be accurate, trustworthy, and remember that your ballot is confidential. To perform the best in your role as a judge, here's a few tips. Get a good night's sleep prior to the contest. Set your alarm, don't hit that snooze. Set it early so that you've got your shower, breakfast, and you're prepared for any travel interruptions on the way to the contest. Because after all, last minute is not on time. First and last speakers are easiest to remember so be fair, focus on each and every speaker. Sit near the speakers. This will aid in minimizing any interruptions or distractions. If any technical or audio problems occur, you will still be able to judge effectively. Do not score contestants because you like their speech topic or did not like their speech topic. 
don't show partiality to a person because you see them as the underdog or because they have a favorable trait. Don't judge more favorably a contestant to whom you may have seen compete in other occasions. So contestant disqualification, originality. Speakers can be disqualified for eligibility, length of the speech, or originality. The contest chair should check each contestant's eligibility before the contest. The timers will keep track of the time, noting if the speech has too short or too long. The length depends on the type of the contest, so see the timer record sheet, form number 1175. For a speech to be original, it must have 25% or less of its content quoted, paraphrased, or referenced from another source. It must be properly cited and not plagiarized. Also, contestants cannot reference another contestant's speech. Only judges and contestants can protest originality. If he or she feels that the speech is not original or more than 25% is not original, he or she must submit a protest to the chief judge or contest chair before the announcement of winners. Once the protest is submitted, the speaker will be given an opportunity to respond to the judges. After the contestant leaves the room, the judges will vote. And if the majority agree that the violation is original, originality exists, the contestant will be disqualified. Clubs do not have to hold a contest. They can appoint a member or rep to represent a club at the area level. However, the club cannot have both a contest and appoint a member. It's one or the other. This year is the decision of the district director to allow two contestants to move up to the next level if there's only four clubs in the area or four areas in a division. District 11 will host the Spring Conference on April 6th, the International and Table Topics Contests. So at the club level contest, you can hold a contest in your club as part of an educational program. Typically, any active member in good standing can participate in the club contest except for the international contest where a contestant must have six speeches from the competent communication manual finished or completed levels one and two in pathways. If you were to appoint a contestant because of time constraints, lack of participation, any other logistical challenges, you can do so. Appointing a test contestant should be done in accordance with the Toastmasters International Rules and Guidelines. The Table Topics Contest. The contest is very different from the international and the humorous contests that have been held in the last several years. First, there is no preparation for the contestants. Second, the contestants will not hear the speeches of all of the other contestants. Each contestant will be asked the same questions. They will have one to two minutes to respond. The judges will judge on their responses. To be fair, all the contestants will be moved to another physical room or to a break room if online. One at a time, according to the draw for order, each contestant will enter the main room and be asked the same question. Once the contestant is finished, he or she can remain in the room, thereby hearing the rest of the contestant's answers. Roles. You've got your contest chair. The question should not be an easy one. For example, tell us about a time when, nor should it require a specialized knowledge. Example, when does the court clerk have duty to? It needs to be kept a secret, so no contestant has an advantage if he or she happens to hear the question before the start of the contest. The contest master will introduce the contestant using first and last name twice, then ask the question, and then repeat the question. A good practice is to have the question written on a paper so that the exact words are asked of every contestant. Contestant eligibility must be checked at every level of the contest, as a contestant could be eligible in March, but not in April. If he or she hasn't paid their dues, or if the club has not paid for at least eight members. 
The sergeant at arms guards the door so no one enters or exits when the one contestant is speaking. He or she also allows the next contestant to enter during the one minute, minute of silence in between contestants while the judges are making their ballots. The chief judge. The judge's certification of eligibility and code of ethics must be filled out by all judges, including the tiebreaker, before the contest begins, form number 1170. Besides being a paid member of the Toastmasters International, there are various levels of accomplishment needed for judges depending on the level of the contest, for example, club area. Select the table topics ballot, form 1180. This ballot has a higher percentage for content at 55%. Judges will be instructed to sign the ballot and print their name. If the ballot is not signed, it is invalid and cannot be added to the counter's tally sheet. There will also be one tie-breaking ballot, Form 1180A. The name of the judge who has this ballot is known only to the chief judge. The speech contest timer record, Sheet 1175, is given the chief timer who has the stopwatch. The second timer has the responsibility of giving the signals of green, yellow, and red, which for the table topics contests are green at one minute, yellow at one minute, 30 seconds, and red at two minutes. The second timer is not required to have a stopwatch or timer. However, it is suggested that the second timer also time the speeches in case the official stopwatch mal malfunctions. The two counters each need a counters tally sheet, Form 1176. This form is filled out by the counters after they receive all the judge ballots and the speech contest time record sheet to ensure that all the contestants spoke for less than one minute and no more than two minutes, 30 seconds. Do not open the tie-breaking ballot unless there is a tie. Chief judge. If you're going to be the chief judge at your club or at one of the other levels, you should be aware of all the roles needed to hold a contest. Those roles are contest chair, chief judge, two timers, two counters, and one tie-breaking judge. The number of judges needed is different depending on the level. At the club level, there should be five judges. At the area level, an equal number of judges per club with a minimum of five. For example, if there are only three clubs competing, there needs to be one judge from each club. The other two judges can come from other clubs or areas. If one club has several members in attendance, they can serve as timers and or counters, but not as an additional judge. At the division level, an equal number of judges per area with a minimum of seven, who may not be members of the same clubs as any of the contestants. Special ballot number 1180A. The tie-breaking judge guide and ballot is a ballot that the chief judge gives to one of the most experienced judges. He or she is the only one who knows who the tiebreaker judge is. The tiebreaker judge ranks every contestant. There are 10 slots on the tiebreaker ballot, used only when there is a tie. If there is a tie for first, second, or third place, the ballot is opened. The process is, the tie is broken based on where the tiebreaker judge has placed the tied contestants. For example, the result of Adam is in place A and Betty and Carl are tied for second place. The tiebreaker ballot lists David, Carl, Betty, Adam, and Emily. Because Carl is ranked before Betty, he wins the second place and Betty wins the third place. So the forms we have for the speech contest are the speech contest rule book form 1171. 
The ballots are International, Form 1172. The tiebreaker for that is Form 1188. Table Topics, Form 1180. The tiebreaker form for that is 1180A. Timers Form is number 1175. Counter, 1176. Judge Eligibility, Form 1170. The Notification of Contest Winner is 1182. Results, Form number 1168. Speaker Certification of Eligibility and Originality, number 1183, and the Speech Contest Profile. You should be able to click on these that will link you to the forms on the Toastmaster International website where you can download and print the forms. Should you have any questions concerning this training or about your club, area, or division contests, please contact Meg Claxton, DTM PDD, Chief Judge of the 2023-2024 Speech Contest. Her email address is tmmeg at prodigy.net. Thank you for attending this training and we hope this has been beneficial for you.